there's a special election taking place in Texas's seventh district. And it turns out that establishment Democrats are aggressively pursuing a, an oppo research campaign against a Democrat who is running in the primary. Her name is Laura Moser, she is a progressive and the DCCC absolutely despises her. And nothing made that clearer than a recent attack that they lodged against her, which read as follows. Now this is from Meredith Kelly, DCCC communications director. She says, voters in Houston have organized for over a year to hold representative John Culberson accountable and and win this Clinton district. Let's stop for a second. So in 2016, this particular district did vote for Hillary Clinton. So that's what she's referring to there. Unfortunately, she continues, Laura Moser's outright disgust for life in Texas disqualifies her as a general election candidate and and would rob voters of their opportunity to flip Texas's seventh in November. So let's stop here. They actually have an even worse quote about yeah, her that we're did. gonna get to in a second. Um, but think about how unreal this is. This is the Democratic Party attacking a Democrat in the, in the primaries. First of all, what happened to pretending to be neutral during the primaries? I guess that's gone, that's totally out the door, right? You'll find out in a second their financial motivation to be opposed to Laura Moser and why they're not neutral. Um, secondly, they did an oppo research memo on her. Why is a Democrat the opposition? Shouldn't you be spending your time doing opposition research on the Republicans? That's, they're so soft in the general election. But the Democratic <laughs> Party is gathering opposition research on fellow Democrats because they're progressives. Right. <laughs> this just this proves everything we were worried about about the Democratic establishment. They said it in public. They did this publicly, which leads to point number three about that quote. You can't take it back. So if Laura Moser wins the primary, and you're goddamn right she will, and you should, we'll have the links down below to donate to her, to volunteer to her, go to her website. I, I couldn't oppose the DCCC more on this issue. Uh, so, but if she wins the primary, then the Republicans are gonna run ads saying her own party right. said that she's disqualified because of her disgust for Texas. You monsters, you corrupt idiots. Can we emphasize the idiots part right there for a second? Yeah. So in their mind, they think we wanna take back this district. We don't think this is the most viable candidate and we're gonna make the very rare step of blasting our own, one of our own candidates, right? If you need to understand the credibility of their political analysis, just look at their political tactic here. Mm -hmm. Where the net effect of them attacking her, just like Debbie Wasserman Schultz doing what she did to Bernie, has the effect of rallying tons of support around her, there will now be links in this video. Our group is gonna send an email for her tomorrow. Many other groups were out there endorsing her today. So if you wanna think about the political strategic insights of the Democratic Party establishment, this is representative of it. It's, it's just shooting ourselves in the foot after shooting ourselves in the foot. And that's why it's so important that we not buy into some of the conventional wisdom that we're told to believe over and over again about how to fight various fights. We need to support our own and get some real progressives elected. So Adam makes a great point. The only upside of this is that now you've almost guaranteed her a victory in the primary. Thanks a lot. God, you guys are so stupid. They thought in their bubble, like, we'll show her. Okay, we already picked our hand picked people, one of whom is a former Goldman Sachs guy. So we've got this figured out. And all of our rich friends in Washington will be so aghast at Laura Moser, this will end her. No, what you've just told everybody is she's the actual progressive in the race. And she doesn't represent the donors. Thank you, thank you, you morons. And so, and but one other thing is, Adam said we, and but they don't view it as yeah. as per, that themselves as progressive. That's we keep making that mistake. I make it too from time to time. They, they view themselves as how am I going to get rich? I'm the guy, and so that goes to the second terrible thing they said about Laura Moser. This is according to the Intercept. The more serious charge the party leveled at Moser was to imply corruption and self-dealing. They wrote that in 2017, Moser paid over $50,000 in campaign money to her husband's DC consulting firm. More than one of every six dollars spent by her campaign went straight into her husband's DC company's bank account. Okay, so that's true, 
But that money went into the firm's bank account and immediately went out of the bank account because that firm bought political ads for her, which is what political consultants do. Now here is where the DCCC felt like there was a misstep. Uh, first of all, let me be clear, the DCCC does self-dealing all the time, okay? And what I mean by that is they have their little list of consultants that they literally force Democratic candidates to work with. And they make a ton of money off of um, taking campaign money from these candidates and padding their own pockets, okay? So this whole allegation of self-dealing is laughable when it comes from the very people who do it themselves on a regular basis. It's become so normalized. Now, uh, what what you know, Moser did in this case is not illegal, it's not unusual. Again, that money went toward political ads, which is what that money was supposed to go toward. So let's just be clear about what firm this is. Mm -hmm. This is actually Bernie's online consulting firm. Yes. The one that helped him build a grassroots army. So essentially what she was doing was investing in the grassroots as an alternative to big money politics. That's right. Right? In this moment, as she gets attacked by the establishment, Ironically, she'll be more empowered to put up a big sale and let the wind blow her campaign forward because she has a huge grassroots army that she's been investing in, which is what we want candidates to do, right? I actually talked to someone a couple years ago who was the online director for a major progressive Senate tour now. And what this online director said was, if I made one mistake in the campaign, it wasn't going to bat early enough for bigger investment in online because that is how you build your grassroots army and have them with you for long haul. So this is, I mean, maybe one fifth is too little. Maybe she should do more, if anything, but good for her for investing in the grassroots. Yeah, and I wanna be clear about that. It, it, it's uh, the, the company's called Revolution Messaging and it's it, Bernie's company as in, not that he owns it. Right. He also used them during the 2016 campaign and to great effect. So again, if anything, you've just done an ad for revolution messaging, so congratulations. Now the losers who wound up losing to Donald Trump didn't use revolution messaging, they used the other companies that are connected to the DCCC and the people who work there. And they are brazen about those connections. Look, before we get into those connections, let me just say, I, I said on this show a long time ago that what do the corrupt do? It's, it's, you see it all across the world, it's not just America. In fact, the crown prince in Saudi Arabia is doing it right now. The most corrupt, the first thing they do is they smear the opposition with charges of corruption. So that by, we go, wait a minute, but you're the corrupt one. They're like, oh yeah, now you're just trying to copy me. Right. And, and, and sometimes the smear does work. If you're not knee deep in politics and you don't know. In fact, I talked to a person who voted for Bernie Sanders today who said, well, I didn't know she said that about Texas. Oh. So sometimes the smears do work. Yeah. I, I think in this, uh, in the long run here, it's gonna backfire because of all the things that Adam has explained. Uh, but if you never heard about it, you might think, oh my God, Laura Moser's the one that's got issues. No, no, it's the DCCC, which in, in, in DC, they're known as, informally as the consultant factory. Because one, there's the revolving door, the people who used to work at the DCCC then become consultants, and then the DCCC gives them I, all the contracts. I gotta give you guys some specifics on that, because that is the part that really infuriated me. This is all about making money, this is all big business to them, and it's about crushing people who have a progressive grassroots agenda that they just cannot stand. So uh, to give you some examples of elected Democrats who have spoken out against um, this whole consultant scam, Representative Tim Ryan from Ohio said after the 2016 elections that the DCCC quote, needs to go on a consultant detox. Okay, but there's more, I wanna give you specifics. So uh, consultants take a percentage of all media placement of election ads. That enabled consulting firm Mothership Strategy, which was founded by DCCC veterans to earn $3.9 million from the failed special election campaign uh, for John Ossoff uh, in Georgia last year. Around 2.5 million of that uh, Ossoff Hall came from media buys. So they're just they're just making money. And, and keep in mind, the DCCC pressures the candidates to to work with their consultants, it's. Yeah, I just gotta make a real quick point about that. I'm gonna let Anna continue. Mm -hmm. So this is what I took. If Bernie Sanders and real progressives like Laura Moser, James Thompson in Kansas, Brent Welder in Kansas, though Allison Hartson in California, the list goes on. If those real progressives win, they're fighting to get money out of politics. Well, that would take money from these consultants. That would be devastating to them. On the other hand, when John Ossoff loses, who cares? They got rich. 
What difference does it make if John Ossoff wins or loses? They got the $3.9 million anyway. So it's not, they don't share your priorities. Their priority is how do I make a buck? Mm -hmm. And then for them to turn around and smear a progressive like Moser, beyond the pale, of course. You got more? I do have more. So why do they hate Moser so much? Yes, it has something to do with her progressive values. But Moser actually called out the DCCC back in 2007, 2017 in a an article that she wrote for Vogue. And in that article, she it was titled, Want more women to vote, here's an idea, stand up for them. And it went on to slam the DCCC for saying the party would welcome anti-choice candidates. Now in that piece, she wrote the following. As a first time congressional candidate, I've been warned not to criticize Ben Ray Lujan and the powerful Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. But I cannot hold my tongue while Lujan and the DCCC abandon the commitment to human rights that brought me to the party in the first place. Mm, DCCC didn't like that, and so the opposition research began immediately. And by the way, just to clarify for anyone who's confused, uh, why some people are, you know, why she's being smeared as someone who hates Texas. She had once said that uh, she likes living in the city more than a small town, and so she uh, gave the example of Paris, Texas, as a place that she didn't enjoy living in. And uh, the DCCC took that out of context and used it to smear her as someone who hates. Texas. And and by the way, she was referring to Paris, Texas, where her grandparents are from, and which is hundreds of miles away from her district. But they made it seem like she's saying it about her own voters in her district. A disingenuous lie from the DCCC, who would have guessed? So I guess this is a declaration of war against all progressives and against the non corrupt. Look, so Moser, by the way, is also just Democrat. And and just Democrats, the one thing you should know, and you can look at their progressive platform, etc. But a lot of groups are progressive. P Triple C is wonderfully progressive. Democracy for America, our revolution, etc. But all of them have pledged not to take corporate PAC money. The Justice Democrats, none of them take corporate PAC money. So that is what makes those consultants in D.C. furious. So in reality, the executive director, for example, the new executive director for D Triple C is Daniel Sena. Married to Elizabeth Christie Senna, who, after Daniel was selected as the executive director, his wife wound up being a partner at Greenberg Quinlan Rosner, and then the DCCC paid them three hundred ninety-five thousand dollars over two years, and in in the twenty sixteen election, and in this cycle, have already funneled five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars to them. So what a wonderful little circle they have going. But there's a lot more details. We'll put the article from the Intercept, which is. Excellent in the description box as well, written by three excellent reporters, Lee Fong, Ryan Grimm, who's also a TYT contributor, and David Day, and as good as it gets. Can I say one more thing on this? Yeah. They might have done, done us a favor by outing themselves in this situation, because this is honestly just the tip of the iceberg. They have made explicit what they do behind the scenes every single day. We, you know, we talk to so many candidates who feel pressured by them, who are encouraged to get out of the race by them. Mm -hmm. Even those who are ahead in fundraising because of grassroots donations are told to get out of the race because they're too progressive. In some cases, you know, other reasons that are because they're too liberal in various ways. This is this this should be a rallying cry for all of us and a wake up call. And I know that like my grandma in the past has told me, oh, I wrote a ten dollar check to the Democratic Party, and I'm like, grandma, I like where you going in general. <laughs> But let me talk to you about other places to donate, right? But they, people just assume good intentions here. Mm -hmm. And they're not only undermining our agenda, but again, I believe undermining our ability to win. And I'm gonna say we in the broad sense, those who want a big resistance victory in 2018, our ability to win because they're intentional, unintentionally sabotaging us by putting lame people on the ballot and undermining people who can actually win. Yeah, and, and one last thing, it's a story that, uh, that we broke at TYT, TYT investigates reporter Michael Tracy broke it. It's referenced in this intercept story. There's a memo that they sent to all the candidates. Uh, now, one of them said, hey, don't attack uh, one another. Oops, you <laughs> just attacked a, a candidate in a primary violating your own memo in the most brazen, outrageous way that I have ever seen. So apparently you didn't mean it, that you, what you meant was progressives unilaterally surrender to the establishment candidates, okay? Yeah, don't attack us, that's that, what they meant. Exactly, mm -hmm. God, yeah. there's the worst hypocrites. But number two, they told the candidates, and that's what James Thompson from Kansas, a wonderful progressive who almost won last time in Kansas, this time he will win, is 
uh, objected to, he said, why do I have to spend all of this money with only the consultants that are on your list? What if I found a great person working in the middle of Kansas? What if I've got great progressives? No, you won't help me unless I spend most of my money with those consultants that you're in bed with. He said, no, sorry, no, I'm not doing it, okay? And that's what all these progressive candidates should say. And, and to Adam's point, to all of you out there, if you're gonna give money, that's great, because small dollar donations are pulled together, are more effective, more powerful, and will beat these corporate PACs. But give it to progressive groups that you trust, and because those groups have earned your trust. Don't just hand it over to people that call themselves Democrats. All right, check out all the links below. <laughs> Wonderful story by The Intercept. And by the way, all the candidates we mentioned, we'll put their links down below too. Go give them small dollar donations directly. Don't run it through this consultant factory. What you just watched was one of the videos that we do today, but we actually do a whole two hour show every single day. It's a podcast, you could watch it in video or listen to it as audio. You can download it, you can stream it, and you get it completely ad free if you could become a member of the Young Turks. tytnetwork.com slash join.